This woman killed 600 men with makeup. Giulia Tofana lived during the 17th century in Italy when women didn't have a lot of power, but she was an entrepreneur who developed her own poison called Aqua Tofana. It was colorless, tasteless, odorless, could kill a man in four drops, and was undetectable after death. She sold it to women disguised as cosmetics so that they could kill their abusive husbands and live out their lives freely as widows without any suspicion. This went on for decades before officials realized she was one of the most successful poisoners in history and she was executed. One of the most insane serial killers I have ever learned about, I still to this day believe didn't work alone. So you guys know Jack the Ripper, right? Well, this guy not only outlasted and outdid him, but he put New York in one of the biggest states of fear and taunted investigators for years. Before we get into who he is and why I don't think he acted alone, let's talk about what he did. The first kill he ever made was stabbing two young girls on Christmas Eve of 1975. At this time, New York was an absolute shambles. People were being killed and assaulted all the time. Robberies were happening bodies were being found and the police really couldn't keep up with everything so whenever this happened it wasn't like a big news headliner well a few months later two girls were shot sitting in their car both of them ended up surviving but it happened so fast that they didn't have any information on the suspect just some 44 caliber bullets left on scene well the next attack occurred whenever this couple was sitting in a car they reported that the whole car felt like it exploded and the girl looked over and saw a bullet wound in the guy's head because of the bullets used the police were able to make the connections the differences between male and female serial killers. Males typically kill for sexual gratification, whether that's psychological or physical, and their victim's identity matters less. They typically kill strangers. In contrast, 90% of female serial killers know their victims, and they tend to kill for practical or justifiable reasons, at least in their minds, with the most common motivation being financial gain. So I have this neighbor who I've never spoken one word to at all. Uh, every time I drive by my car or when I had only a bicycle, I would ride by and we would just wave towards each other. That's it. That was our whole communication. And today I decided to go get some coffee from the gas station and everything. And I drive by and I see his garage doors open. We wave at each other. And I go get my cup of coffee. And then I also get him a cup of coffee so I can finally meet this guy who I've just been waving to for the past like year and a half. I pull into his driveway and this older gentleman, this old man, got up, smile on his face and I gave him a cup of coffee and his daughter walks out and she tells me that he actually has autism and his favorite part of the day is when I go to work or I come home from work and we wave at each other. That is his favorite part of the day. That hit me right in the heart. That made me feel so good. So just by a simple act of waving, I made somebody's day. So I've been wanting a new truck for like a while now. So yesterday I went up to my dad and I said, hey dad, can you buy me that new F-150 they just got at the dealership? So my dad looks at me and goes, you know what? I'm going to buy you that truck. And I was so surprised, believe me. He says, you want me to buy you this truck? Do me one thing. Go into our backyard and list all the types of trees we have in the yard, all right? And come back to me. I was like, dad, let me get this straight. You want me to go into our yard and list all the types of trees that we have, like the oaks and the maples and stuff like that? And he goes, yeah, that's exactly what I want you to do. List all the trees, then come back to me and we'll go to the dealership together and we'll buy you that truck. So I go outside and like an hour later, I finally come back. I have a list of like 30 trees, like maples, oaks, pines, evergreens. And I show it to my dad and he looks over the list. So my dad's checking the list and I'm all excited. And then he goes, you missed one. I go, dad, what kind of tree did I miss? He goes, you missed the money tree. And I go, the money tree? We don't have a money tree. Then my dad was like, exactly, so don't expect me to buy you a truck. The electric chair is perhaps the most painful of all modern execution methods. Let's discuss what it feels like. First, your head will be shaved, and then you'll be strapped to the death device. Electrodes are attached to your head in various parts of your body. A metal cap is secured with a strap under your chin with a sponge wet with saline underneath. Finally, you're blindfolded. Your wretched misery begins when your executioner pulls a lever, sending 1,000 to 2,000 volts of smoldering electricity through your body. Will you feel pain? Yes. This will be the single most painful experience of your life. The electricity is cooking you, frying you up like morning sausage. If you're lucky, your heart will stop beating after the first surge, but it's more common to take several. Your blindfold is meant only to conceal your eyes as they pop out of their sockets. Your clothing will smoke and catch fire, and so will your flesh. You're now damned with burning alive. After the second surge, your body will bloat like a balloon. You'll remain conscious through it all until death occurs which can take up to 12 minutes afterwards it'll be hours before your autopsy is performed because your body will be too hot to handle she almost lost her eye because of me story time so in college i used to have the worst roommate because she would always take my stuff without my permission and then not return it 
And I would always tell her like, hey, I don't care if you use my stuff, but at least ask me so I know, you know? She didn't care though. She continued to use my stuff anyway. Now, one of the things she constantly took from me were my eye drops, which was super annoying because in college, my eyes were constantly dry from like staying up late and doing homework and things like that. So I told her like, when you use my eye drops, please put them back because I need them. But of course she did not listen to me and continued to take them without putting them back. So I did what anybody would do. I dumped out all my eye drops and replaced it with super glue. <laughs> But I did tell her like, hey, this is not eye drops, this is super glue, so don't use it. And she didn't believe me and used it anyway. Warning, these are things that you do not want to know, part two. Right now, there are thousands of microscopic mites snuggling up on your body right now and they're so small you can't do anything about it. So if you feel itchy right now, you know why. A lot of people tend to forget this, but spiders can also crawl on ceilings. So instead of looking at the floor for spiders, also make sure to look up because there could be one right above you right now. There's an island in Mexico that's full of hanging dolls from trees all over the island. The place is called Island of the Dolls of This is why parents should believe their kids. In 2010, a 15-year-old boy started to notice that the door to his attic, which was in his bedroom, was always open. One day, when his mom's giving him a hard time about being lazy, he's like, well, you're one to talk. You always leave my attic door open. She's like, I haven't touched your attic door in months, and nobody else has either. Not easily frightened, the boy decides to leave the attic door open. And so he's laying in bed, and he kind of looks over at the door, and standing in the door frame is a figure staring right at him. He bolts, tells his parents, they don't believe him, and then six months later, they move anyway. A few years later, the boy discovers his favorite teacher actually moved into his old house. And so he jokingly asks her, you ever see any ghosts walking around your attic? Her face got completely serious and she's like, you know, as soon as we moved in, the door to the attic kept opening. So we investigated and we found a trap door that led onto the roof. Someone had been crawling in through that entrance and living in the attic for years. This is why you should always be afraid of Australia. In 2014, an eight-year-old and her family went on an extended vacation to, you guessed it, Australia. After a couple of days, she started having this horrible recurring nightmare where an alien would appear in her room and try to grab her with its tentacle. After a week of this, she is terrified to go to sleep, but her parents keep telling her that it's just her overactive imagination. One night, she swears she feels that thing grab her leg and she leaps from the bed screaming. Her family runs into the room and they see her hysterical in the corner and then they look at the bed and they all gasp. It wasn't an alien. It was a seven foot long adult carpet python that had been sneaking in through the ceiling tile and into her bed to stay warm every night. This is why you should always watch videos to the end. In 2003, a woman came home to her apartment to see that her door was unlocked. She went inside, nothing was missing, so she assumed she must have left it open. When it happened a few more times, but still nothing was missing in her apartment, she went out and got a camera, set it up in her apartment, aimed at the front door. The next day, her door was unlocked, so she reviewed the footage. She watches in horror as late in the night, her front door opens and in walks this tall, creepy man who looks around and then walks towards her bedroom off camera. She immediately sprints out of her apartment and calls the police, who show up and tell her to go back in her apartment and just try to stay calm, and that they would put an officer right outside her door so she's safe. As she's sitting on the bed, totally traumatized, she realizes something. She only saw him enter her apartment on that video. She doesn't know if he actually left. As she's sitting there, she feels breathing on her ankles. She runs out, the cop comes in, and he finds the tall, creepy man under the bed holding a knife and a camera. This is why you shouldn't go for walks in Sweden. In 2008, a Swedish woman went out for an evening stroll with her dog, but never came back. Her husband went looking for her and found her dead next to a lake. The police immediately blamed her husband and sent him to jail. After a few months, the woman's forensic analysis report came back and it was clear the husband was innocent because there was all this hair and saliva on the